Yo, yo, yo! Welcome back, everybody. This video, I'm going to be breaking down this statement a little bit, just to kind of explain some of the rules when we write queries, so that way you guys can intuitively know what to do with, like, this capitalization and all of that stuff. So the first thing I wanted to point out is white space. So here's an example of white space. It's a space. You need to know that Oracle is not white space sensitive. What that means is we can literally just sprinkle white space basically wherever we want and things are still going to work the way we want. So for example, if I'm like, hey, this looks stupid, let's put like 40 spaces here. You're welcome to do that. And just to prove to you that I'm not lying, let's run this thing and see how it works. And you can see it outputs the same exact thing. Now there's one gotcha to this, and that's when it comes to strings. So you see here, we have a string of hello world. And any time we have a string surrounded by these single quotes, Oracle does care about white space. So right here I have a space. If I have two spaces here, it's going to change the response from Oracle. Let's run it. And you can see here it actually outputs an extra space. So spaces inside of strings can change the output. So you need to be aware of that. The other thing that you need to know is that you can't separate keywords. So this is a keyword, right? And you can put as many spaces after it and before it as you like, but you can't put spaces between it or it no longer remains a keyword. And then you're not gonna be able to run your script. Boom, error. All right, so let's put this all back how it was. There are two other forms of white space and that includes the tab, 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 and also the new line. So this should still work. Works fine. So I'm gonna put that back. <laughs> now the next thing you might have noticed when you first looked at this is like, what in the heck is going on with all this random capitalization? Like, how are you supposed to know what's capital? Like this is capital, but this string here isn't capital. What's going on with that? Well, this is a convention. And the convention is that whenever we have a keyword, we're going to put that in all capital letters. So this is a keyword. This is another keyword. This string here though, that is data that I put myself, so it's not a keyword. We can keep that lowercase. And once again, this is purely a convention. So that means I can actually change this. I could say select in lowercase, run the thing, and guess what, it works just the same. This rule actually still applies when we're talking about objects we create in our database. For example, tables. Here we have a table, dual, we can change the capitalization of this and it should still work. I'm gonna capitalize every other letter because that makes me cool. Right, so now let's run this and prove to you that it works. It works. So, I guess this brings up the question, should you follow the naming convention? The answer is yes. Literally almost everybody follows the convention of capitalizing the keywords. And that's not just for Oracle database, but SQL Server, MySQL, and many other database management systems. So I highly, 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 <laughs> it's a tongue twister. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you follow the naming conventions. This too has the gotcha with the string because the string is basically whatever data we want it to be. So if I make this all caps, when I output it, it's gonna be all caps. So it pays attention to that. So you can see down here, it's outputted in all caps. So to show this a little bit better, let's write a more complex query that is going to prove that when you have a string, one of them being uppercase and one being lowercase, they are not considered the same thing. So let's go down a line. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a string and we'll just make it say true. And where are we gonna select this from? You guessed it, we're gonna select it from dual. But now we're going to add another keyword in here, and that's the where keyword. And this is where we can put some kind of restriction or qualification on what the data needs to meet in order to be returned. So if you had a table that had bills, for example, you could return all of them that were greater than $500, for example. But in this situation, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to make a string and we're going to put in here caps. And you can see the first letter's capital. And then we're gonna see if that's equal to caps. Same exact capitalization, same exact spelling. So this is a comparison. 
Keep that in mind because in some programming languages, they will have two equal signs. But here we just want one. There is not any kind of assigning going on here if you guys have practice with other programming languages. So what exactly is this entire thing going to do? It's going to return the string true where caps equals caps. And when is that? All of the time. So this is literally just going to output the string true. But this brings up another good question. How can we run just this section? There's some, there's some uh, things barking. I'm gonna see if I can shut them up. QUIET! No, I think I just made it worse. <laughs> so let's output this. So to run just this, we can highlight it, and then we can run it now. And you can see it returns true. And literally it just outputted the string. Yes? What's going on? Oh, I'm just making a video. What are you yelling at? I was trying to shut those things up. <laughs> it didn't work. But now let's change one of these strings to lowercase caps. And now let's run the thing. And just, just to make it clear, I'm gonna clear this out and then run it. Wow, no rows selected. It's broken, ha. Huh? Yeah, so you guys get it. So this is not the same as this. Now, another way, rather than having to highlight everything and then clicking one of these buttons, there's something known as comments. And comments can be used to kind of tell the database engine to ignore certain parts of our code. So, right now, I'm not using this line. So I can tell it, hey, ignore this. And the way you do that is with two minus signs. And you can see it changes colors. It's pretty. Yeah, so now, I don't have to highlight this. I can just press this button and you can see it runs. That's one type of comment. Another type of comment is known as a multi-line comment. And the way you do that is with a forward slash, asterisk, asterisk, forward slash. And then anything between these is commented out. So if I wanted to comment out this entire section, all I'd have to do is throw it inside one of these comments. So I could go like this and paste that up here. And then I could work on this one over here. So there, now you guys understand spacing, capitalization, and comments. I think that's enough for this video. <laughs> Let's move on. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is start creating a table. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. So be there or be square. And also, if you like these videos, do me a favor and subscribe and share them with all of your friends. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.